Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. The sales process of a day in the life of a rep yeah. gets so convoluted with all those little things that you have to do that the, the key thing of the prospecting um, and just networking with people goes by the wayside. Hey, everybody, it's Scott. It is Wednesday, and this is your Pitchworks podcast. Hopefully, uh, you are returning. But if this is the first time, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe to this fine program in the podcast app of your choice. And uh, we will be glad to deliver sales, marketing, and startups to you every single Wednesday morning. And you fine subscribers will get it a little bit before everybody else does. It's, you know, it's the least we could do for you. This week, we've got my good friend Dan Finnell. He is with a company called Mind Matrix. Uh, I don't even know where to start in explaining this. This is a very, very sales rep, sales results oriented product, which has everything to do with customization and data and basically talking to people who are the right fit at the right time. Uh, this is this is a deep dive for you sales nerds out there like me. I think you're going to like this conversation. All right. So as we are wont to do, we have brought one of my friends into the studio, Dan Fennell, sales director over at Mind Matrix. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm glad to finally have you in here. I you know, know what? You've been really supportive and I do appreciate it. Well, I've referred to you as my virtual mentor. Nah, don't and, do that. And what I mean by that is I know that I can go to, I can listen to things that you've done in the past, all the guests that you have, I've, I've have uh, personal relationships with a lot of those folks. Oh yeah, and uh, and I when I need an answer or I just need something, I'm like, man, I gotta, I, I need something to listen to. Yeah, that people that I know, topics that I love, and yeah. a guy that I trust. That's why. That's why I've always supported you. If there's a, a gold medal for not being able to take compliments, yeah, I'm gonna win it. You got it, man. I just this is super uncomfortable for me. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> ha ha ha! Now the tables have turned. The tables have huh. turned. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Um, so let's change the subject. Okay. And um, so you're working newly now. I mean, yeah. less than half a year, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. With Mind Matrix, which is a cool local company. Absolutely. Mind Matrix is software that helps a company to sell more. Yes? Absolutely. That's how I start off the conversations. People say, tell me about Mind Matrix. And there's so much in that box that, that throw out at people. And I say, well, basically, we help you sell more. Period. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I didn't want to drill. I wanted holes. Yeah, just tell me. Yeah, right. Um, and I think a lot of people will tell you that sentence. Like they'll tell you, like my software helps you sell more. And right. some of them mean it's Shopify. Like I, it's a cart for your website. Or, right. Uh, it's a chat bot that'll answer questions at midnight. Right. Like, but you guys actually engage the sales team. Like this, this helps the sales team and the B two B. And I'm sure there's a B two C play too here. But I personally, my own, like, uh, the way it resonated with me was in my experience in in the B two B universe. It Absolutely. seems super useful to me in the B two B space. Um. Start us off. Uh, what's a general purpose pitch for, for Mind Matrix? A general purpose pitch would be that, uh, yes, we help you sell more. How do we do that? We have this platform that we allow you to put all of your marketing material in. We then push it out for you, or we allow you to do that. So there's a lot of flexibility with that. And then there's that, the visibility on the, the customer or the our client. They can see the entire journey. So they see that customer that they send something to, then they have this kind of uh, spooky, you know, hey, what are you doing in the background? So I can see every email that you open up. There's I can a granularity see. to the reporting similar Absolutely. to some of the things that you may have seen, but not integrated with the content delivery. Absolutely. Exactly. That's so, what I liked about it is it tied the reporting with the content delivery. Right. 
So we can see everything. We see the buyer's journey. We see the web pages that they've gone to. We see blog postings. We see LinkedIn and we tie that all together. And then here I am as a salesperson when I go to make that first initial phone call. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Scott, it's Dan over at Mind Matrix. I know that you're interested in blah, blah, blah. Or I saw that you were looking at something. So now that conversation, it's it's easier. It's a warm conversation as opposed to salespeople. There was that time when you were handed a phone and the phone and book. Nothing else. Exactly. You didn't even get a phone book. I was there. Let's just start calling people. They would literally just say like, make sure you're making calls, go on the computer and they would subscribe to like a, like a Dun and Bradstreet kind Abs- of a, Yes. And you would type in the kinds of things you were looking for and you would get not accurate information, but- Not accurate at all. You'd get NAICS codes. You'd get yeah. uh, name, address, maybe decision makers if it was a big enough company, which then made it a harder sale, right? You know, And you're like, oh, I know everybody in the world subscribes to Dun and Bradstreet. Mm-hmm. So everybody calls this person because yep. they're the listed contact that you know the D&B folks have. So I want to start- I want to touch on the content piece first because okay. um, that one really kind of shocked me. And it's 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 not easy to shock me, I don't think, anymore with the tech side, right? Okay. Um, you showed me a repository where the right materials are sort of concocted in the background. And then the rep who is involved in this. Again, it's not, Absolutely. It's not designed to just give you a completed deal, but the rep can see the person likes this material or maybe they don't like this material. Um, like they keep coming back to this page. They don't go to that page. Right. Maybe we can tweak the deliverable and it's like, oh, they need the one that has the picture of Pittsburgh on the cover right. because they're a local you know, company that would appreciate that. Right. Um, is, it a, is editing happening inside of it or are you importing your own stuff? That's a great question. It, it's, it depends on the client, on our client themselves. Okay. Sometimes they come to us with a complete marketing plan, marketing strategy. Their marketing people work with us directly. Right. So then we take their information, we load it into the platform. Okay, Just so exactly the way it, it gets served exactly. every other time. right? And it gives everybody peace of mind. So marketing doesn't have to worry about some rogue salesman going right. in there because we never do that stuff. I never change things. Lies, I tell you. So marketing has that peace of mind. Sales has the peace of mind when they want it. Like, hey, this is the right information at the right time. Yes. And then they send it. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. You have a vendor that you're working with. So that vendor can send you in, uh, material, marketing material. We can upload that, put your logo on it. So now your your vendor specified information is going out. That's cool. I forgot that that was even one of the options. It's And then you have the blank template. Yeah. So now I have a, bl- a blank template open i can put on whatever i want grab graphics put those on edit do whatever i want to do it on the fly i can have it saved there yeah so it's all there and then as a as a you know as something that it's already done everything's perfect and then if i want to tweak things i can totally tweak it and then send it out and it's perfect for that customer it's Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a custom presentation. Customization is what we, 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 we harp on that. Loved that. You showed me this, you know, uh, when we were kind of getting ready to have this conversation here and no disrespect intended. You, you backed up the truck. There was a lot of information oh, it's there. It's endless. a powerful tool that you've yes. got, right? And, you know, if you don't mind me saying so, I actually, that's, it feels like it could almost be an impediment, right? In, in the sense that when you're trying to bring on even – even a fairly savvy client, it's like, where do you start? Right. Um, we have, and it's almost sometimes a hard time, uh, we have a hard time explaining what right. we do. So what we have to do is we have to ask so many questions. Who who do you sell to? Yeah. How do you sell? Mm-hmm. Tell me everything. Tell me about that buyer journey. So now I'm like, oh, let's take you down this path. Let's. So it, it's it's really... People come to us with a, they have one thing in mind. Yeah. And then by the time we're done half an hour on the phone with them or half an hour face to face, they always say the same thing. I, this is not what I expected. Yeah. Thank you. We finally have an end to end solution that, yeah, we have somebody that can help us with the automation, the marketing automation. Nobody does the playbooks like you do. Nobody does this yeah. all in one spot. And we need it as simple as possible because we have all these other tasks that we're trying to do. So yeah. what we do is we keep 
everything in one place. So they they're used to uh, a Salesforce CM uh, CRM. Right. We integrate directly with that. So you're in your Salesforce platform the whole time using Mind Matrix. You're used to sending emails out through Outlook. Right. So you're in Outlook sending these email templates, watching your and you're able to track everything directly from Outlook. That's cool. So everywhere you're used to working, you don't have to learn a new platform. Right. You stay as you're more productive. See, I didn't know this part. Yeah. I didn't know that you were you're keeping the same user interfaces. Ex- absolutely. That's usually it's the, huge. Well, that's usually the failing of the end to end. Yeah. Right. The failing of the end to end, and I, I've seen it is is like they. And I'm going to say this, and I, I don't mean any offense, right? But yeah. a lot of times. Uh, the person who's trying to go end to end is trying to go proprietary so that the customer is held captive. Right. Right. And if, if you're giving us a user interface that we're already familiar with, then I'm starting to think like, Hey, maybe this data really is mine. Maybe I can migrate if I'm not Mm -hmm. happy. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I like where you're headed with that. We, because we, we own it. Yeah. We, we work with companies that have open APIs. right? Right. So we, we'll make that handshake. Nice. And that's why, like it, if we will customize anything yeah. because we can, and that's what we do. So when there, we can play with all these different large companies, small companies, and we're just able to, again, make that handshake happen yeah. to keep these people in the same place where they're used to. So I don't have to learn. I'm in Salesforce right now, logging activities, logging my pipeline. Now I have to go over to the you know, HubSpot or MailChimp. Right. Now I got to do this over here. Now I have to go somewhere else to figure out something else. We keep everything together. And we the reporting is it. all in one place, which is what I really care about. Right. Right. If I'm the person who's going to make the decision, right. What I really care about is how hard is it to come up with a plan based on data. Right. Yeah. That's the question. Brutal. Yeah. How hard is it to come up with a plan based on data? Yeah. Which is why so many people are just shooting from the hip. Yeah. Um, this is how I've always done it. Trust me. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and if, if I'm in Outlook, look, I don't use Outlook anymore. I used to use it all the okay. time. But what do I'm you all, use Gmail? I'm all Gmail. Yeah. All we have now, right? Gmail integration. You don't have to leave Gmail either. But what I'm saying is the interface. Yeah. You, you jumped right there, right? Like I know people who will never go to Gmail. Right. Like I've connected them on, you know, like a company. We've set up a company with Gmail, right? right. And they still insist on Outlook. Mm-hmm. The power of the user interface is really key. You know, they, they will never understand, understand that threaded conversation yeah. view that Google gives you. Right. And they'll fight to the death to keep outlook right um and that's a big obstacle right if right. you if you're a proprietary software that says like look it's my way or the highway can't you do can't it do that. Right. right can't do it sorry we we can't deliver something that you need yeah basically is what you're saying <laughs> right <laughs> but still buy from us yeah. still buy from me because i can't give you what you need i but i really need to make quota i don't think that they're necessarily thinking about the cost of training when you take 50 people or 100 people times an hour's worth of email training, an hour's worth of whatever else, you know, editor training, right. collateral distribution, all that stuff. That's why it fails because I buy a software from you. Yeah. I buy anything from you. And so there, there's always that training piece. It always comes with a training piece. But if I have to keep going from one thing to the other and yeah. then my sales team's not using it yeah. and then six months later – I'm like, I sit down for that, that Monday morning meeting and I'm like, Hey, how's it going with such and such software? And, and nobody's using it. Right. Because oh, they're, that's like, it. Yeah. they're like, Hey, why would we use it? Cause I have to bounce from one thing to the other. You want me to do 900 things a day yep. plus bounce from one thing to the other. So when you're streamlining everything, you're keeping everybody in the, the, in the environment that they're used to being in. Yeah. They're going to use it. Most, most managers though, like are terrible. <laughs> and uh, let me back that up. Yeah, go I'm, ahead. Because I'm talking about myself in this regard too, okay. right? We don't understand when we've pushed too far. Okay, and w- in what aspect? We've asked too much. Okay. So what falls off the plate is sort of a natural evolution. It's a thing where it's like, well, the thing that seems least important right. drops to tomorrow, right. drops to next week, yeah. right? Because we haven't built ourselves a way to say like, you must get everything on this done. And I'm 100% sure that you can actually 
for salespeople, right? Right. Look, if you work on a factory and you got to put out a hundred units, I can't help you. I'm talking right. about sales. Right. A sales manager doesn't know when he's pushed people to too much work because you don't know how long a phone call is going to go. You don't know how long it takes Absolutely. to write a proposal. It's too hard to clock. Right. So what do we do? We go do everything on this list. And then we basically let the rep write the script from there. It's like, this didn't seem like a priority and you've never screamed about it. So I didn't do it. That's a great, that that's, that's awesome because the, the process that reps have to follow yeah. the, the, the sales process of a day in the life of a rep yeah. gets so convoluted with all those little things that you have to do that the, the key thing of the prospecting um, and just networking with people goes by the wayside because I've, let me I've tell you about list- conference calls. Right, salespeople oh, being dragged into three gosh. conference calls. Yeah. Right. Once you get into the, the the deeper end of the pool, right? It's like, oh, we have an HR conference call at ten to right. make sure you understand your benefits, and everyone, it's mandatory. Right. You must be on it. And it's like, look, I I love my benefits. Don't get me wrong, but do this at seven p.m. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Do it when I'm not trying to. When other people are available for me to have a conversation. Because you're literally giving me a goal and then telling me, right? Well, you got to run this race with a five pound brick in your pocket. And at one o'clock, we're going to put a brick in the other right. pocket when we all talk about the birthday cake in the third floor conference room. And that's why sales managers end up managing to the deal itself yes. and not to the whole territory, not to the team, not to the the mission of the company. Right. You're so wrapped around in, did the Jones deal set, did we close that yet? Did because we if we make yet? that, then I don't have to worry about these other ones. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And then, and then what happens is the Jones deal doesn't close. Yeah. You still have a, a crap load of, of work to do so, all these things that you didn't do. And now sales managers like, Hey, how many dials did you make today? Yeah. Where, where are you in the pipeline? Hey, why hasn't your customer paid their bill yet? Right. Oh my goodness. I'm not in collections. I'm in sales, you know? And, and that's what I'm saying. Like the list of to do's is super long. Right. And because all of them have a squishy sort of time element to them, maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's an hour, we do sort of let the rep prioritize. Right. And um, anything we can do to reduce the number of logins, I'm on board with. So Now, the cost becomes a problem. You have to be able to use a calculator and say, how do I justify the expense? Yeah. Right? And, and we have to talk about this for a minute, well, right? Let me jump back one second. Go, go, go. Okay. So one of the things that's built into our platform are playbooks. Oh okay. yeah, because we're stupid. Salespeople are stupid. Oh, be we nice. get. Uh, on, we. I'm, I've been a sales guy for twenty years. Self hating okay? sales. Not man. at all. Come on. It's not that. It's just that you get so bogged down by everything, right? And then you're like, I gotta sell, gotta sell, but no. I gotta do all these other things. So here's you. what we have built into our into the platform playbooks. Yeah. So it's a cadence. What do I need to do today? How do I how do I start the journey with the customer? Okay. So on day one, when I want to reach out to Scott McTaggart, I'm going to send you an e- uh, an email intro. Okay, boom, to do list pops up. Bam. Which what is do- probably, if I had to guess, an email intro based on what you expect my preferences to be, or my expect it, like it's, like a list that I'm on is aimed at particular people. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So day two, I'm calling that person. I'm calling you on the phone. I'm, I'm doing something radical in today's society. I'm it's picking up the up. phone and calling you. Okay? Oh, I just talk about the work in general. Just right. To follow yeah, right. Okay. So, and the, and the script's there. So our people in your sales manager, your marketing team design a, a script. So boom, there's the script. Hey, it's Dan Fennell from Mind Matrix. Following up on an email that I sent you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. If you pick up the phone. Right. If you don't pick up the phone, there's a script there. Yeah. So we know. Day three. And it's all heads up. All like heads I'm seeing up. it as I go. Exactly. Day, day three, I'm going to make sure that we're linked in together. So that process is there. So now the salesperson is like, okay, these are the things I have to do today. Yes. And you're getting email alerts. We're, we're sending you everything that you need to know when people open stuff up. Right. So here are the people that you're going to call today. You're going to reach out to them today. You know that. So as a salesperson... If I plan my day correctly and I start off with prospecting, mm-hmm. like you're supposed to, right. unless you have an appointment, these are the people that I'm going to focus on. My goodness, people that I know open something up, people that I know are interested in my products. These are the You've folks. You've got to prioritize them. Right. Because they're interested today and time is the very Absolutely. Right. So that's how we do that. So let's go go to the price thing. So let's- Well, no, well, I don't want to talk about price. Okay. I, I, what I'm saying is you need to be able to function- on your own, independent of a mind matrix sales rep to know like what's the value of time, right? That's how you cost uh, justify anything. Yeah, That's what I'm saying, absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, so if, 
let's say you've got Salesforce, which okay. I'm on record as already saying I think is way too expensive. Okay. okay. I, no disrespect to the fine sure. folks at Salesforce. I'm sure they're lovely people. Right. Um, but it's they've they've demonstrated that they can hold the line on their price and people will pay. Oh, it. right. And Absolutely. I do not feel comfortable with with the price point that it's at for most people. Okay. And that's gonna that's our our springboard into well, then why are so many people paying for it? And it's because they can use a calculator. Like they sat down and they were like, okay, we save X amount of time through these automated workflows in Salesforce. So while the number seems large and daunting for us, it wasn't larger than the alternative of not using right. Salesforce. So they decided to basically make it real. Right. Like that number was a academic point in some other boardroom. But in our boardroom, we were like, no, that money's real. Let's work a math problem here and decide whether or not Salesforce for 500 people or 200 people is a good number. Right. Um, same thing here, right? When you're talking about that, mm -hmm. um, you have to have a way as a sales rep to at least introduce that. You have to talk to them about math, arithmetic really, not you know higher calculus. Sure. Like what's the payback? Like, how do you do the math when you're saying like, okay, I can save a company money by using Mind Matrix? Right. How are you thinking about it? It depends on the vertical or what the size of the company is. Right. If it's a small business, I can, we can say that within six to eight months, your ROI is there. It okay. totally makes sense. This you've, You're making money. There's no learning curve anymore. It's you're up to done. Speed. Totally okay. done. And- the the people that you've sent things to that's what you're starting to close them within six months because the whatever business you're in that's you, a pretty common yeah. right you better be having appointments with them within the first thirty days right and then within the next you know two to three months their proposals better be out in in the, in the sales world so you're think thinking in it. terms of incremental deals is how you're thinking about it I, that's how I think about yeah. it. That's that's the way I look at it. No, um, it's, it's it's just interesting, right? Because you and I kind of come at things analytically, mm -hmm. you know, in in the same way. I always think in my first one is time. Like, how much time did you save? Right. I never liked to promise people deals. I always talked about, well, you're going to do these tasks. Sure, absolutely. What if you could do more of them? And that's where I'm, that's where mind my mind always goes. In that aspect, I when I sit down with a sales manager. It's a, it's an easy conversation because I've been in that role. Yeah. I've carried the bag. Mm -hmm. I get with the day in the life. I know the trouble that they're going through. And my thing is, listen, man, your guys don't always know what to do. They don't always know what to say, and they don't always know how to say it. Yeah. I'm going to give you a platform that's going to give them that. You'll have that peace of mind. Mm hmm I'm going to give you a platform that's going to give them the visibility of knowing who wants the, your products and services. Right. So, bam, now it's up to you. I can I can take you to the water, can't make you drink it. These guys got to pick up the phone. They got to they got to close the deals. But I'll get I'll get you the 75, 80% of the way. You got to do the rest. Okay, so I'm going to say something messed up. Yeah, right? go ahead. Um but I think it's actually useful for people to hear. It's 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 not just, you know, sort of randomness. Um while you were talking, I I thought about something you said earlier about how, you know, like you were you were doing this for years and years. I was doing this for years and years. And right. we have that sort of relative understanding of one another. Right. And, you know, one thing I, we don't talk about very much when we're in sales marketing, you know, like just any revenue business development kind of a role is it's really hard to decide to be that today's going to be your best day. It, it, over 20 years, you get worn down. Yeah. Inspiration is great yes. when it strikes and when you're well rested and when your kid's not in trouble at school yep. and when everything, you know, you didn't spill coffee on your shirt, like inspiration. And that's just sort of like sheer force of will to win mm -hmm. is unstoppable. Right. Second runner up, right? Or I guess it'd be first runner up if it's not the number one. But anyway, is what if you just went through the tactics that you did when you felt like you were on your best day. And that's what you're trying to package up. Is right. Let's capture what we did on our best day and then make that the new norm. Right. That's a, that's a good call. That's a really good way of putting it. Because when you said, you know, I, I'm a sports guy yeah. and I'm always like, and I coached my son's stuff and, you know, I love coaching and I love helping out in that aspect. 
when you're setting somebody up for success and you see that and you teach a kid, you know, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, you teach him how to swing right and you set him up, but this is the proper way to swing through. This is where your feet have to be. He gets that momentum going and that, and it's, it's a head game. And then every time that kid goes up to bat, it's his best at bat. Just like you're saying, like, what if every day was your best day? Right. What if or at every least time- the best day you've had to this point. Exactly. Inspiration is a powerful tool. But if you just need to be inspired every day, this job is going to kill you. Oh, yeah. Sales, you, you can't you do alive. it. You can't do it. You got to be, salespeople are crazy. It's, it is a, a fr- like certain people are firefighters and can run into a, a burning building. Yeah. And, and God love them for being able to do that. No the danger, yeah. I don't think I could do that. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't sign up to do it, you right. know, every day. Yeah. And it's the same thing with salespeople. Who in their right mind can call 50 people a day knowing that you're only going to talk to five of them mm-hmm. and three of them are going to tell you that they're not interested? Right. Every day. Yep. Every day. And then you have a guy above you or a woman above you, whoever's above you. They're like, this is the number that you have to hit at the end of the month, or at the else, end of the quarter. Or else you're going to know you didn't come through. Right. Do, all other penalties notwithstanding, right. you're already in a bad way. Yeah. Right? And you're like, oh, I was supposed to do X and I did X minus 10% or right. whatever, right? And everybody knows. But, but we just struck on something I think really tremendously valuable, which is you use your inspiration to get to that point mm-hmm. where everything's coming up roses for you and then you write it all down. And that's, you know, that, that when you say cadence to me, like the yeah. cadence you've got built into your product. Sure. I don't know what research you did to develop those cadences and whatnot. So I can't speak to necessarily all the different years of development sure. that went into it. But I can tell you this. Somebody said, well, on my best day, right? right. <laughs> I would follow up like this. And then I would put a tickler in for tomorrow that says, well, he didn't pick up the phone but we're going to send them a LinkedIn, right? And and that cadence that you described. And that's when I realized I needed to do that more often, not just when I felt like it. And right. they productized it. Yep. They productized it. And, and it's not just a good sort of personal development point that you made. It's also actually the secret sauce of the cadence product, fa- cadence facet of your product. And that is also the way I'm going to pitch that the next time I talk to somebody tomorrow about that. I'll Let me know. This is my best, this is what your best day playbook looks like. Yeah. Boom. Wow. You can wait around for inspiration. Yeah. And then hope that on that day of inspiration, you're going to write it down and go do this every day, which you're probably not going to do. Salespeople have a tendency yeah. to be pretty mercurial in this yes. regard, right? Yeah. Like the day I don't feel like doing anything, I bury myself in paperwork. If it's two days in a row, well, maybe I can stretch that paperwork out, right? You know, it's like yeah. I get into a funk and then all of a sudden bill collector calls because I haven't made enough money and I've got a just a red hot poker and I just like, okay, I got to call everyone on, you right. know, on my list. You're panic mode. Everybody knows you're in panic mode. The guy on the end of the phone knows you're in panic mode. I learned something from a guy years ago. Yeah. And he said to me, just keep moving. That's he's all you got to like, do. He's like, Danny, just keep moving. Just keep moving. That's all you got to do. I um, uh, I tell, especially the the younger people as they start to move into this, like 25 and under is a really hard time to start this career. Okay. Um, because a lot of times people, I, I, in B2B. Okay. It's a, it's a hard, hard period of your life to start B2B because- you've got this natural baked in thing that everyone can see that you've never owned a business. Mm-hmm. You've never managed a yeah. huge team of people. Right. Um, and I just tell people at that age, just stay in the saddle, right? Same just thing. Keep you're talking. moving. Right. If, if the customer is talking to you and you haven't burned the bridge or ignored a signal that this is a waste of your time, just stay in the saddle, right? Just keep doing your thing. Exactly. And, and again, the cadence is a, is really cool. When you guys showed me the cadence that you had built up in your demo system, mm-hmm. um, I'll go back to what you said people say. That's not what I was expecting. Right. So, yeah, that was a big eye opener for me. I right. Didn't, I didn't necessarily expect it. Now, I'm going to give you something that you didn't expect. Okay. I think your key customer needs to be smaller customers. I think your key customer that really is going to make the most out of this product, mm-hmm. it's going to be the small company, okay. small in a global sense. Okay. Like I'm not talking about like me and you decide to go start a, you know, a t-shirt shop, which we should someday Dude, I, that we have some great t-shirts. I'm down. You haven't even called bumper oh. stickers. Come on. We could incorporate hats. Ah. Think about it. This would be, it's endless. Yeah.
I think the smaller company is going to get the most out of the time and effort savings because they'll be the closest to the the champion for the product. Okay. And they'll have the shortest learning curve. There's, Does that make sense? There's definitely an aspect to that. Yeah, where you're like one degree of separation from the product champion, the sure. mind matrix champion in the company. Right. And he comes in and he's like, look at this, this is cool. And it's going to make you a lot of money, right? It's hard to distribute that enthusiasm when you start to get into the enterprise, it, even it, if it's justified. It's difficult for sure, absolutely. Yeah. And that small thing is, and you're seeing in, in, on my end, you yeah. see that impact and it's huge. And that that's the... Uh, as a salesperson, you want to sell, right? But you also want to impact somebody's business. You want oh, to help absolutely. Them grow. And that's cool to see that. Well, that's so what makes we, up for those five calls that actually pick up. Exactly. Yeah. So in that case, absolutely. Those small businesses, the 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 one of the the pieces to our puzzle is our channel side. Okay. And so what we do on a on a larger base, because that is right. On an SMB side, we have huge impact. On a channel side, so you have this Take a company like Dell. Dell sells through all these channel partners. Yeah, They will use a company like us to get all their um, marketing information, any information that they need to go to all their channel partners. Oh, we can push got it. it. So we can do that. So you're, you're absolutely correct. On the SMB side, we can impact, we can create sales processes for all these people. Yeah. But on a larger scale, the way that we work with these channel partners, these fortune, you know, 50 companies, Whatever, right, enterprise yeah. companies, we can take the the marketing material that they need to get to their partners, yeah. put it in one place mm-hmm. so they can push it to their partners and their partners can log into the portal and grab it so everybody knows that the message is concise. Got it. The logos are where they're supposed to be. And now, hey, are all the legal boxes checked? Absolutely. You so, know what that is? That's my bias showing, right? My bias is that if you give me five people who really want to be here, I can take over the world. Right. So that that's how you, that's so you and I have so much in common. So yeah. we're, we're Irish, right? Yeah. So we got that going. <laughs> a little bit, right? So we have that going for us. But it's that we love helping people. Yeah. We love connecting people. We love getting involved in in helping people grow their business. I love when people tell me they love what they're working on. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. the coolest. And that's why we're so good in the space that we're in. That's mm-hmm. why we're so good at, at helping people grow their businesses. And that's why you see it that way. You yeah. totally see it. Like this is an impactful thing that'll help somebody change the way that they're doing things and give their, their salespeople, because that's how we're, we're wired yeah. to salespeople. Give me a process to follow and I will run through a wall. If you, yeah, if you give me a sales rep that I, if I'm the, cha- you know, the, the champion for Mind Matrix in my company, mm-hmm. right? And there's only a team of five people I can energize that Absolutely. small team yep. and they will Kool-Aid man their way through any wall I point at yep. because they know that this is way easier than working the job they used to work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because those days of here's the phone, start calling are gone. They need well, tools. They for need, these people they for are. The, but, you know, I'm like, no, that's a privileged thing to be able to say like, wow, this is a great company. Right. They're giving me tools. They're, they're helping me out. God, I'm not feeling so low. My lows aren't as low as they used to be with the old company right. that I used or you know my my sibling works in the same job and they hate their job yes. because I mean I we've said this in joke or in jest before you know it's um sales people get paid to be rejected right and yeah. it's still true it's the truth but every time you give them that hot well scored lead mm-hmm. it's just a little bit better right it's, it's just awesome. a little improvement incremental a, improvement yep. every single time hey um where can people find you online they could find me online. They LinkedIn, obviously. Dan Fennell, two N's, two L's. That's out. Um, yeah. yeah, very, very easy. That yeah, way. Um, Mind Matrix. Uh, you know, we're there. Mindmatrix uh, dot net. Mm-hmm. So um, we're there. Um, I do. I'm out and about constantly. I don't know everybody that you know. I'm not at all the. I don't know that either. that's true. I don't know. <laughs> but you but, got a pretty good Rolodex of your own. But I'm out. I'm out. So we have we have a good time. So yeah, I, I think um, at a bare minimum. You know, people should see a demo. I don't know if there's a YouTube video or anything that they could see that's like that. We're working but if you on have that. something yeah. like that, I would love to post it. Okay, cool. Because, like, I think maybe some people might think, like, oh, you know what? Every once in a while, McTaggart takes money to like do commercial yeah, right. infomercial mm-hmm. type things. Yeah. No, I only put people on that, like, I know are generally aligned with me. Mm-hmm. And I, honestly, I thought we're cool. Um, the Mind Matrix conversation was really cool. 
Yeah. Like I struggle to understand everything that's possible, which is a big statement, you know, because I've seen a lot of this tech already. Right. And I was, it was like, wow, this really does kind of get its fingers into everything. Dan, thanks yeah, for coming thank on, Thank you, man. This, this is great. This is awesome. All right, that's the end of the ride. Thanks to Dan and all the folks over there at Mind Matrix for making this possible. I, uh, I always enjoy a good deep dive. That was fun. Uh, hopefully, you'll check them out at mindmatrix.net. Uh, I think there were some very interesting insights in that conversation. I, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully, you did too. Uh, check us out next week. We're going to have another show on Wednesday. And uh, if you're subscribed, you'll get it automatically. We'll catch you then. The Pitchworks Podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart, LLC. Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. E-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name. E-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.